my ceramic life as a full-time maker when I was 40, although I trained when I left school. And I was sitting in the garden. I'd worked as a, as a domestic ware potter in my own studio for um, two years, and I felt there was something else, but I didn't know what it was. And I was sitting in the garden with a painting friend, and I had in my hand a porcelain bowl and held it up to the sun to show her how it was translucent and wiggled my fingers. And it was at that moment, as we were looking through it and I was moving my fingers, I thought, why didn't I incorporate light? And so from that moment on, I started to throw, at that time I was throwing regular vessel forms with a light bulb inside. Mm -hmm. I, hadn't gone further than that, it was very difficult to raise the porcelain high enough to make a large enough vessel thin enough to be able to incorporate a light bulb. So that, for two or three years I was struggling there until I met a wonderful Japanese potter who invited me to go and make work in his studio. And that was where I learned greater freedom. I had a wonderful teacher when I was at art school called Lucy Ree, who had given me the, the structure and the purity of good, strong workmanship. But Ryoji Koye released my expectations of the material and my work completely changed after that. I've written a book called Clay, Light and Water and I'm hoping that it will be useful to young makers who are interested in using light and water within their work and enjoy using porcelain. Well, I've tried to share with the reader what I've learned over the years. Many, many people have been very helpful to me, um, but it's a long, slow path to discover the person who is going to be able to advise you on everything. It's only when I a bit started to write the book that I had to work out how I thought about it because I just developed a way of thinking. You have to know how it's going to light but you don't know how it's going to look until you've made it and fired it. And so it's a question of learning from each piece. You learn something and you put that into the next piece that you make. And in my head when I'm throwing, I'm, I'm really a thrower. And as I'm throwing the work, I'm also thinking or sensing how the light can come through spaces if I leave a space, it can send a, a shot of light and it must be thin, the porcelain, otherwise it doesn't show, you don't see the translucency. And my hope is that, that the feeling that I have in my hands which moves the clay then can be felt when somebody looks at the piece so that they can share the pleasure that I get mm -hmm. in making by looking at the piece. I was very lucky eventually, about 10 years ago, to come across the a lighting technology school, Bev Bigham, Beverly Bigham, in England. And he is somebody who knows, his name is in the book, and he also 
um, read my electrical chapter to make sure that everything that was in it was correct. And he is somebody who's introduced me to light, lighting systems, which I could not have used without him. If I want to create a new piece, I'll maybe give him a ring and say, look, I want to light the ceiling with something. And then he'll say, well, you need this. And he has the latest technology and he's been a very great help. And I think we each of us as potters need to find a, te a technical advisor because the lighting is changing so rapidly, the technology, that it's very hard to keep up with it. And of course we all think that LEDs would be fantastic, but I haven't found that they've done what I want them to do yet. I've got one, that piece up there is made with a new, a brand new LED lamp, which I'll show you, which is very interesting and it's, it's a beautiful colour, I think. So just keep your, keep looking at lighting shops, keep looking at the technology, there's a terrific lot on the internet and they tell you what the lamps do, but you could spend your lifetime looking, you need an advisor really. It is so exciting if you share ideas. By talking, the idea grows and your thoughts begin to see together. You begin to visualize what we're talking about. Whereas when you work in isolation as an individual, the whole process goes on in your head and you visualize what you're thinking but when you collaborate then that adds to your thinking and the creativity that you can produce and we would never if we were in the back of a car driving around Finland and we got so excited just each visualising what we were saying. Yes, we could do that. Yes, it might do that. But it wasn't until we put the whole thing together that we knew what would, how it would look. Mm -hmm. So, okay. we're looking forward to making the next piece. Mm -hmm.